Hi guys and welcome to this first tutorial um, on creating first person weapons for CryEngine 3SDK. Um, creating this tutorial because there's been quite a few people on CryDev who have messaged me asking um, for a tutorial to be made. Um, I don't profess to be an expert on creating first person weapons but um, I have got one working myself. Um, so I thought I'd make a series of tutorials just to help anybody else out so they can you can get your weapons into into the engine. Um, some areas that I still don't f under fully understand and I still need to implement with my own weapon which is uh, things such as custom attachments. Um, I might make a video tutorial um, after these just to show that um, once I've got it working on, on my own. Um, Right, there's going to be a link um, with this video, um, whether that be on the forums or uh, on YouTube or on my own personal website. Um, and that'll be a link to uh, this Uzi content folder here. And that's basically it's going to be uh, a combination of a couple of things. There's going to be a couple of files in here which you're going to be using uh, initially to with, with this tutorial. Um, and also there's my uh, completed easy in here which has got all of the content uh, there's a little readme file in there as well um, with all of the files and folders uh, that you that you'll need to just copy into your build of the cry engine uh, in order to get that working now this this first tutorial is going to cover actually skinning the weapon and dealing with um, dealing with the rig so there's there's a couple of files as I say in here. There's rig and Uzi Silence. Now if I just pull up Uzi Silence just initially, um, I'm using 3ds Max 2012 for this as well. Um, I unfortunately uh, can't help any of you guys with Maya or XSI or uh, any of the other uh, DCCs out there. Um, but there's this. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. If we if we open this up, uh, this is actually the the weapon model. This is the uh, game game ready model. Um, I could probably have shaved a few more polygons off it um, in hindsight, but this is a, a different version to the one that that uh, that I've provided you with that's completed as well. So you know this one will be using iron sights as opposed to red dot sight. Um, it's got a suppressor on it as well and a full grip. Um, so yeah, you've got you've got a couple of things. But I mean, one thing to to bear in mind and to remember with this though um, is when you if because th this tutorial isn't going to cover actually modeling weapons um i mean it'd be absolutely massive if i included all that um this this is all ready unwrapped and everything so all you need to do is apply the material that's uh, or the the make create a material using the um the textures that i've provided um with the completed uzi um i'll just show you that quickly um just inside of here if you go to objects weapons uzi smg there's a textures folder in here which has got all the .dds files and all of the, uh, the TIFF files. Um, I think there might be a few targets in there as well, but you don't need those really. I might shave those out before I actually upload it. Um, so yeah, you've got those in there to make your own material, and this that, that those materials work with this this version of the gun as well. Um, it should have um, all the correct um, material IDs set up on it, which I'll just double check. Um, pretty sure. Uh, all of the uh, all of the, the the accessories, so the foregrip and the silencer, should all be on material ID two. Uh, we can check this using element mode actually, um, and all of the rest should be on material ID one. Um, so you've got two two materials. You've got your body and you've got your accessories. Um, so yeah, right. What 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 are the things to bear in mind? Sorry, uh, when you model your weapons, um, is to consider when you create your uh, game resolution mesh to ensure that there are elements that also parts of your weapon are still classed as elements so that they could be moved later on you don't want to model everything into everything because when you come to animate it you won't you won't be able to animate um, those those components so for example I mean like the cocking handle here uh, and the plate uh, and this this bolt here are all separate elements so when we come to skin it in a moment we'll skin those to the same bone so that when we come to animate uh, a reload um, or when we just want the player to cock the weapon it'll be able to move all these pieces independently um, same goes with the trigger so you should be able to like you know rotate the trigger for, for when it's being pulled and all the rest of it um, 
the same magazine magazine release catches and also inside of here if I just drop to uh, wireframe mode just for a second you've actually got individual rounds inside of the magazine as well um, you can just about see them there so you know you've got this this magazine here which is removable um, so long as you skin all of those components together right okay so enough on that we what we're gonna do uh, quickly I'm just gonna quickly convert that back to an editable poly um, and the other thing I'm just going to do, just for argument's sake, I'm just going to reset the X forms on it and convert that back to an notable poly again. Okay, so we've now got our, our weapon, which is named appropriately, which is Uzi Silence. That's the naming convention we're going to use for this weapon. Um, so I'm just going to give that a quick save. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this file and we're going to merge it into our, our file, which is got our rig in. So I'm just going to make sure that's saved. Just going to uh, reset Max quickly, uh, and I'm just going to grab uh, the rig, um, the the rig file here, and we'll just quickly go through that. Just open that up. Okay. So what we've got here is um, the the rig, and that's the weapon rig and the the rigger mesh for the first person arms. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to skin well first of all we're going to import the weapon into the scene we're going to skin it to this weapon rig which I'll quickly talk you through um, and then we'll be in a position where we can uh, we can export that um, and start to use it within sandbox so what I'm going to do is I'll just talk you through this rig to begin with what we've got here is this this is a bit of um, it's, it's quite. It's not massively complicated, to be honest. I mean, if you unhide everything in the scene, uh, you'll see um, a few extra bits here that I've found I've never used. Um, so you can just hide those, but they are in the scene just so that you're aware. So if you get this purple kind of uh, first-person mesh appearing and this this kind of, um, I believe it's just like a symmetry plane of some description. Uh, if you just hide those, um, the next thing we're going to want to do is is hide the first person rig because we're not going to deal with that yet. I'll deal with that later on in the tutorial um, in the um, the section for animation. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up select by name. I'm just going to go into the root, and we're just going to select these pieces here. I'm just going to go display expand selected, and we're just going to grab all of these pieces here like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then we're just going to hide, uh, hide those. Uh, then we're going to select this, uh, this this mesh here, hide that as well. And there's a couple of helpers here as well, which we don't need. Um, just these few bits here. We're just going to hide those as well, just so they're out of the way. Now all we've got left here now is the camera. Um, <coughs> this floating point, uh, which is here, which is actually this. This I'll just quickly explain that actually. There's this this point here. Um, which is is zeroed out apart from on the y-axis which is positive 1.682 um, this allows you to see the center of the screen um, this is where the crosshairs will be but it's also very useful uh, helper when you come to animate the aim down sight um, animations uh, so that you know where to place the iron sights or your you know the center of your red dot sight or, or scope or whatever it is that you, you're going to put on it um, so that you know that where you're going to point where, point your weapon when you're looking down the sights is actually going to be central to the screen for where the, you know where the, the rounds are going to go right okay so this is our, our first person uh, sorry our, our weapon rig uh, this is the root here which is weapon now if I just open up the schematic view Hopefully, all the stuff will still be in there. Yeah, there we go. Uh, you can see that this this weapon uh, nub here is actually a kind of a child of this root. So the main the root of the rig uh, for the first person arms actually controls this. You can move that root that root around. It will actually take the weapon with it, but you can move the the weapon independently. Um, you when you come to move, if you want to move your entire weapon, you want to move this one called weapon. And then on top of that, you've got loads of other little helpers here. You've got um, this one here, collision. Uh, which is kind of the where the kind of the butt or the uh, the rear of the weapon is. This I believe is also tied into um, or can be tied into where melee attacks um, occur when holding the weapon. Um, this one here as well. Weapon term is kind of the end of your barrel. I believe that's also where um, if you draw a line through here, that's where your your bullets are gonna you're gonna fly out in that direction. 
Uh, you've also got this one's another really uh, kind of important one. This this kind of point here is shells. That's where your uh, empty casings are going to be ejected from. And you've got other ones in here as well for things like attachments. So attachment top, this one here, slider, uh, which is uh, I've always used for cocking handle. Um, and then there's this one down here, which is your attachment for the bottom. You've also got uh, magazine release catches and the magazine. So what we're going to want to do now is I'm just going to quickly grab the um, just going to quickly grab the the actual Uzi. I'm just going to drop that in the seam. I'm just going to go merge file, and then we should have that in here. So there we go. Just going to pop that there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure I've got this on wireframe in this viewport. I'm just going to position this, start to position this weapon in place um, or as close to as possible. And it's actually this is actually already in the kind of the places that it was for when I uh, skinned my um, unsilenced version of this Uzi, the one that's given in the example content. So it shouldn't be too difficult to move all these helpers around and then start to skin them. So, but uh, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to move this, start to move this to position. Let's get that in the right place. Uh, and then what we want to do is start grabbing some of these helpers um, and actually positioning them uh, in the places that we're going to want these bits and bobs to go. This so way it starts to get a little bit difficult. <laughs> so just start to position some of these bits um, where we think it's appropriate. So just make sure we've got our cocking handle in the right place as well. Um, and our trigger. Um, well, yeah, I think we're pretty much pretty much good there. Um, you want to make sure that it's actually uh, your weapons kind of centralized as well to um, to where this is so I'm just going to want to shift this across slightly like that. and then we've actually got all of our uh, helpers in in the, the kind of the right place then so yeah what I'm going to do I'm just going to quickly save that just in case anything goes hideously wrong um, so the next thing to do uh, now is to is to actually apply our skin to this. Now there's there's a couple of couple of modifiers that you can use. There's the cry skin modifier, which I've I've seen in a couple of examples when I've opened up people's uh, files when I was actually trying to learn this my, myself. Um, and they've used cry skin. Now there is a series of example assets. Um, if you go to crydev. Um, and actually go to download here. If you aren't aware, there's this source samples assets here. If you go in there, there's actually like there's, there's a, a scarf folder. If you open that up and have a look, Crytek seem to have used just a standard skin modifier on both the arms and on um, and on the and on the weapon. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to use a, just a standard skin modifier on this, um, just to kind of conform with what what's going on with um with the um with the examples so right okay first thing first i'm just going to grab a skin modifier and just go apply that to the weapon okay now the next thing to do is we want to add the bones of uh for this sorry for this weapon rig here that that we're going to want to skin so if we just expand this out and expand weapon out we're going to want to actually skin weapon we're going to want to skin uh, magazine, we're going to want to skin slider, trigger, and mag release. I think, yeah, I think those are the ones that we'll want to pop in. So if we just click select, they'll now be added into this list here. Now you're going to want to start with weapon um, because this will be the one that controls the weapon overall. Uh, next thing to do is click edit envelopes, click vertices, and I like to have select by element on uh, when when doing this. It makes life a little bit easier. Um, next thing to do is to grab all the verts on here and um, we're going to want to skin those or we're going to want to weight those 100% to the actual weapon um, bone so the entire weapon should be skinned to the weapon bone at the base here the root um, what we're going to want to do now is start to grab some of these other um, these other um, bones and start to skin those so if we just grab this uh, make sure you clear it before. When you're doing these individual pieces, make sure you like click just off it so that you deselect all the verts, uh, and then click on these individual elements. 
um, that you want. This is for the magazine now. So I'm just going to grab all these little pieces for the magazine. It starts to get a little bit awkward. Going to grab the bullets inside as well. So we've got all the bullets, we've got the magazine. Um, same idea again, really, with this uh, abs dot effect here. Just gonna, just gonna apply that like that. Next thing to do is go onto the slider. Um, I've been using slider for uh, things like the cocking handle, which is this one up here. So I'm just gonna deselect everything again, and then just gonna go in here. Gonna grab this cocking handle, the plate, and also the bolt. And then we're just gonna just gonna apply that on there like that. So that's got all those bits. Next thing we're gonna want the trigger. So if we grab, uh, well, we're gonna deselect everything first. Grab this trigger. Just like that. And then if we grab this magazine, uh, mag release catch here. Deselect that, and we just want to grab this mag release catch, and then apply it. Okay. Now I'm just going to give that a quick save, just quickly. Now, if I go through and select these, you should notice that the individual elements that we've just skinned to those other bones should now be grey with the weapon selected. Um, so you've got these these individual pieces skinned to the individual bones. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come out of the stack. Um, I'm just going to grab this root, and I'm just going to actually just going to save it quickly again. I'm just going to grab this this root. And I'm just going to check that the entire weapon moves around now uh, off that um, off that that kind of that weapon bone uh, that one there called weapon, which it does. Uh, and the next thing to do is to check that all of these individual elements um, that I was like, explaining earlier are now skinned to. Um, and our skin to these the, to the correct bones. So if I move this uh, cocking handle and plate here, you can see the bolt moves as well, which we want to happen. Um, we've also got the trigger. Let's just make sure that's moving. And then, kind of most importantly, which <laughs> actually caused me quite a lot of grief for some reason last time when I was doing this myself, uh, is just to make sure that your magazine is skinned properly, um, so you can remove your magazine like that. So yeah, okay. So yeah, it appears as if everything that we've just skinned is is in the right place. So you just need to make sure that you just have a little bit of a last check, make sure that um, you've got your skin set up properly. At this point, you can probably unhide everything in your scene as well. Just hide those two, uh, those two bits that you don't. Well, I say you don't need them. I don't use them. Um, and just make sure that you've got everything in your scene. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Yeah, actually as well, just uh, yeah, they, they appear to have used just a standard skin modifier on here as well. So I'm probably not understanding something fully uh, with regards to the difference between or the advantage or disadvantage of using skin and uh, and the, the cry skin modifier. Um, so yeah, okay. So that's the um, that's it for for getting the weapon skinned. Um, we'll move on to the next part of the tutorial now. Cheers.